Right, hooray, hooray, hurrah, here we are at last. A crankshaft back from the engineers. Oh, oh, exhibit A. So, I have been very frustrated, very, very frustrated, because this has taken six weeks for the engineers to do the regrind on the crankshaft. And six weeks when I really wanted to be rebuilding the engine. And I haven't been able to. And not only that, but the bike is sort of blocking up the ramp and so on. So I haven't been able to do some of the other jobs that I wanted to do. All my bikes need, my bikes all need servicing before the uh, summer, really. And uh, some of them need, you know, more than servicing, but I haven't been able to touch them. I've been twiddling my thumb for six weeks. The crankshaft is now back. All the other stuff is still at the engineers. Um, but I said, look, just for heaven's sake, just give me the crankshaft back um, because I can get on then. Uh, and then hopefully the, the cylinder head, which is having new valve guides put in, and the um, barrels, which are being reboard, uh, will be back in time for when we need them. But we now have the crankshaft back. The big ends have been reground 10 thou under, and the main bearings have also been reground 10 thou under. Um, so, as I thought, I knew the big ends needed doing, but they did the mains as well. So, all nicely reground. It's just taken forever. And so, I'm just a bit annoyed, but there we go. Actually, there's one thing, actually, before I carry on. Uh, to mention about work that's being done at the engineers. Just hang on a sec. Right, yes, I did take this uh, drive side uh, uh, crankcase down to the engineers as well, with a view to uh, having uh, this um, inlet oil inlet pipe drilled out and enlarged to uh, the larger size which was I think done on let me get this right this was done on later T160s and, and, and isn't on this particular uh, crankcase but I had a word with the engineers and they were looking thinking they said don't fancy doing that much and then I had a word with a couple of people um, who know about these things, you know, much more than I do. Um, Phil Barge at LP Williams and other people, I can't remember who. And they said, look, you know, you're just risking it by by drilling that out. You know, you can wreck the whole, the whole crank case, which you certainly don't want to do. So it, it's not an essential uh, modification. You know, if it had been, it'd been done many, many years before. Maybe, I think if you're going down the German autobahns all day and all night, it might might be worth doing, but that's probably about it. So, best, they said, look, leave sleeping dogs lie. You know, you, you, you can be creating trouble. So, we never had, we never had that done. Um, and then, um, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, just to mention, because someone was asking about this. Now, I'm trying to get it so you can see. On slightly later crankcases, which this is one, but not late enough to have the bigger um, inlet, uh, there's a, a hole drilled at a sort of 45 degree angle or thereabouts in the end of the exhaust camshaft housing, right? And through there, that's where the uh, taco screws in and it feeds, it runs off the end of the exhaust camshaft. Now, early models, early crank cases, early T160 crank cases, didn't have this hole drilled through. And all that is, that's a drain hole. And what happens is the oil uh, goes, uh, there's like a spiral on the camshaft and it goes down and then it can't get back out again because the spiral is you know, pushing the oil that way. And that meant there was an oil buildup on next to the um, taco, and so that it would leak oil out of the where the taco uh, connects uh, here. 
So a simple modification that try to come up with, they simply drill a hole so that the oil goes in, but it comes out again. Um, so if you do have an early T160 casing, it's worth drilling that hole. I'm not sure the exact size. It's about it's about six mil, six and a half mil diameter. So I think it's about a 45 degree or thereabouts. Just just drill through, and that will stop oil leaks from from the taco drive. Okay. Right, where were we? Okay, so uh, let's go back to the dear old crankshaft, etc. Woohoohoo! At last we can crack on. So, I've, uh, before we start, I've assembled a few bits. Obviously, I've got the, uh, uh, I've got the con rods, uh, but these have the original pie crust big end nuts on. Well, A, you never you reuse, never reuse these nuts because, uh, whatever they are, because they're, they're locking and they to be used once and that's it. B, you don't want to use these pie crust nuts anyway because they're inferior. Well, they're called pie crust, you know, because they've they got this crimped sort of star end on. So uh, we've got the new, we've ordered new uh, big end, uh, uh, big end uh, nuts. Uh, again, only used once, but these are a superior uh, nut. So this is the, uh, this is the style. Uh, of uh, big end nut you want to use again it's a special locking nut only use it once uh, but make sure you use those uh, we've got the new big end shells to go in the uh, con rods uh, and they are uh, well they're plus 10 shells to go uh, on a minus 10 crankshaft uh, then what we've got we've got new uh, these new um, grub screws or I say grub screw. It's a, anyway, they're locking uh, screws for the end for the holes in the crankshaft. So what we're going to and they have a um, a hex end, so I can use an Allen key on them, much better than the originals, which were just a flat blade screwdriver. Okay, so we took them out, we took the originals out, we cleaned it all out the crankshaft, but now it's back from being machined. We're going to clean it out again. Because of course there could be some swarf or filings from the machining that's gone down whilst it's being ground. So we're going to clean them out again, and then we're going to put in these screws, and we're going to use Loctite to make sure. Obviously, we don't want them coming out with the engine running really. Uh, and we've got our assembly lube. Okay, very very important to have assembly lube when doing an engine. Don't just use oil. You want proper assembly lube, which is designed to stay and stick on the bearing on you know particularly on these plain bearings of course it's designed to stick there um and so you know it can be many months before the engine is actually started and if you use oil it will slowly sleep away and then when you start the engine the bearings will be running you know brand new bearings when they're at their sort of most vulnerable will be running without oil <coughs> so it's very very important to use assembly lube uh, a lot tight. We've got the brake cleaner, which is to help us clean out the um, crankshaft. And uh, we've got two new um, bearings for either side of the crankshaft. This is the timing side bearing, and I've got that out because we need to fit the um, uh, which side are we? This side. <laughs> we need to fit the uh, inner race of the bearing on the crankshaft before. Uh, we do anything else we might actually that might actually be about the first job i do is to put that uh, in a race on the crankshaft i'm actually just thinking about the order i'm going to do things um <clears throat> you know am i going to put the pistons on the con rods and then put the con rods on am i going to put the con rods on first and then the pistons i'm thinking later on am i going to try and fit the cylinder barrels with all three con rods and pistons in place or am I going to just fit the two outer con rods for now and then fit the centre con rod into the barrels and put them on and then do the uh, centre con rod up from underneath once the, once the um, uh, cases are sitting in a frame? I haven't made up my mind yet. One thing I can't do is I cannot put the pistons on first because one of the pistons is down at the engineers so that they can do the rebore. Because you always take the piston, which is a plus 20 thousand piston, you always take a piston down 
to uh, having it rebored so that they can make sure they rebore it to exactly the uh, relative size of the piston. When I say relative size, I mean they don't do it to exactly the size of the piston. I think there's like a five thou. I'm not sure exactly how much I think it's a five thou, or I'm not. Don't quote me on that, but obviously there's a couple of thou uh, gap between the piston and the barrel because obviously the pistons expand as they get hot. Uh, so I can't put the pistons on now if I wanted to because uh, I haven't got them. So I think what I'm going to do, this is the order I'm going to do things. I'm going to clean out the crankshaft again. Then I'm going to put the plugs in, the crankshaft with the Loctite. Then I'm going to put the uh, inner race on, the timing side inner race on the crankshaft. Then I think I'm going to fit all three con rods. I'm going to, because the, um, I'm going to build the engine in the bike, uh, like it won't be on the bench. I'm, when I've rebuilt the crankcase, it's going to be put in the frame. I'm a bit worried about access from underneath and being able to see what I'm doing to put that middle con rod on you know, with the engine already in. So I think I'm going to put the con rods all on the crankshaft and then when I come to fit the barrels, I'll fit the barrels with all three uh, con rods and pistons already in place. Okay, so uh, yeah, I just thought I'd talk you through what we're doing. Um, when I come to uh, fit, we'll, we'll, we'll do it all on camera. One problem we got is when we come to fit this uh, driving time inside bearing, which is in two pieces, then they have this uh, sort of baker light. I'm not sure what it is, sort of um, cage. So you can't heat that up. Trust me, you cannot heat that up with a blowtorch because <laughs> it will melt. Um, but we do want to heat the bearing slightly so that it slides on. Um, so I will probably just put it in the oven or something just to get it warm. I, I don't foresee that it's going to be too much of a problem. Uh, getting this bearing on uh, anyway and, and norm normally they're okay to going on but I do see that's the outer race but uh, we do need to expand it slightly before we put it on there so I'll have to heat that but heat it carefully probably in the uh, in the oven that'll go down well <clears throat> right uh, I might be able to put a hot, I might be able to put the hot, I might be able to put like a paint stripper on, on low, uh, on low setting. I might, might be able to do that. But obviously what we, we certainly never want to damage this roller cage here. Because if that's damaged and it breaks up when the engine's running, bits go in the, all, all around and for all I know the actual roller bearings could fall out. That doesn't doesn't really bear thinking about, does it? Okay, I'll uh, I'm going to start uh, getting ready to clean out all the crankshaft in that. 